hello internet. Today we have this MSI 4090 that came in for repair. Not sure what's wrong with this, but judging by these marks, someone wanted to take a bite out of it. And no wonder. MSI is the best 4090 money can buy. And if you don't believe me, go watch my earlier Gigabyte video to get some perspective on why that is. In any case, as I was taking it apart, the back plate came off along with what used to be welded to the cooler. And another piece here, suggesting that this is going to be a long day. At which point, I'm not even sure if someone tried to eat this 4090 or play football with it. Brief visual inspection reveals that the corner compound looks a little bit detached from the board. Consequences of that can be a no detect or memory related errors. Before I do any repairs, I want to check for resistances in the key areas, which look normal by the way, and then power the card and check for voltages. Everything is looking good on the surface, but I somehow suspect a no detect. So let's boot the card and see if we can detect it. There we have it. We are done. We have a no detect, and the reason for that is the lack of connection between the core and the board. To be more specific, the oscillator is not generating any signal because it is not connected to the core. Basically that means that we need to lift the core along with some of the chips nearby and see how many pads got ripped. Too many ripped pads will render this card a nofix and we'll have to proceed with a donor card. So let's remove the core and the memory and have a look.
Here we are, the donor card has arrived. Remember, the old card had a broken weld on the cooler, so the entire thing had to be replaced. And here's the board. Looks good at first, but sometimes there are a few small problems such as moved or knocked off components. All that need to be carefully inspected and fixed before we do any transfers. And once I identified all the areas of interest, I'll go ahead and start repairing the board by moving the misaligned components, as well as replacing the ones that are missing. Once everything was put back where it belongs, I check for resistances and before I power the board, I need to ensure that I get 100 ohms on this pad here. We have 100 ohms, so it is safe to power the board and verify all power stages one by one. Everything is looking good, so let's put the core and the memory on the board and see if we get a working 4090. There we have it. Everything looks absolutely gorgeous. Resistance reading and voltages are normal, and once I booted the card, it posted. Great work, everyone. And that's how we're able to take this dead 4090 and turn it into a working 4090 in just a few days. And if I can do it, so can you. Especially this guy. Short is gone. Funny enough, these donor boards oftentimes come with the cheap screws instead of the original ones. I guess those places in China where these cards are being harvested for 4090 cores are so cheap that they even keep the screws and sell them separate. <laughs> who knows? And who cares? I have all of those screws left from the original coolers, so I'll put them on and call it a day. One last look at the card, plug it in and run some tests. All tests have passed, card was sent back to its original owner, who I hope is happy with the end result, and as for you, if you learned anything from this video or had a great time watching it, please consider subscribing, liking or posting comment below. Goodbye.